Radio telescopes like LOFAR and the Westerbork telescope map the sky by collecting radio waves instead of light, which is what optical telescopes do. When you tune your radio in between stations, you can hear some of these radio waves from space as noise. But this noise contains all the radio waves from all directions in one big mush. To zoom in on a particular patch of the sky, the Westerbork Synthesis Radio Telescope uses 25 meter wide dish antennas. The special parabolic shape focuses waves from one direction only into the receiver. But there is another way. For LOFAR, we use thousands of small receivers without dishes in a technique called beamforming. Suppose a galaxy sends out radio waves. After years of traveling through space, they arrive on Earth and hit our antennas. They arrive at this antenna a fraction of a second earlier than at this antenna. So to map only these waves, we add a large delay to the signal that arrives at this antenna and a smaller delay to this one. Only then do we add them together. In this way, the signals coming from one direction all add up and amplify each other. For signals from all other angles, this doesn't work so well, so these get filtered out. It is like constructing a narrow cosmic searchlight looking at a small patch in the sky. By changing the delays, we can point our beam at another patch. We can even construct multiple beams at once. This way, we can get a high resolution image of stars, galaxies, gas clouds, and other interesting phenomena across the universe. At Astron, we apply beamforming almost everywhere we can. In Apatif, the latest upgrade for the Westerbork Synthesis Radio Telescope, we use it in the conventional dishes. In each dish, we installed an array of 121 antennas, which allows the dish to form 40 beams instead of the previous one beam. So now, the Westerbork Telescope has a much larger field of view, allowing us to map a larger part of the sky.